Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is a video on trig identities. As always it is geared towards A level maths but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also so hopefully you find the video useful. Okay we're going to start out by proving a couple of really important trig identities and we're going to show now that tan of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So suppose that we have um, a right angle triangle that we've drawn here in the first quadrant and this works in any quadrant and if I call this angle here theta and I say well if I go um, from here to here is x units and from here to here is y units and I'm going to call this distance r what I can say using trig ratios that sine of theta must equal the opposite over the hypotenuse which is y over r and I can say that cosine of theta equals the adjacent over hypotenuse which is x over r and we can also say that tan of theta equals the opposite y over the adjacent so y over x let's see what happens if we do sine of theta divided by cosine of theta So, sine of theta over cosine of theta is going to equal y over r divided by x over r. And when we multiply fractions, we should know that we can actually flip the second one around and multiply. And when we do that, we're going to find that the r's cancel out and we end up with y over x and y over x is exactly what we had earlier on is tan of theta and that works for any values of theta provided that um, the cosine of theta doesn't give us an answer of zero okay let's have a look at another trig identity that's really really important so suppose we have a circle now and this is an angle theta again and we make a right angle triangle here this is some point on the circle P with coordinate XY which means that we've come along X units let me just straighten that out it means we've come along X units and gone up Y units and I'm going to call this distance the radius of the circle now once again we can say that sine of theta equals um, the opposite over hypotenuse which is y over r cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse which is x over r and what we're looking to show now is that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1 this is a really important trig identity and just so you know sine squared of theta or cosine squared of theta is the conventional way for writing this sine of theta to be squared so that this is the more conventional way that we write sine theta all squared okay now we also know um, we're going to use some coordinate geometry of the circle and we know that coordinate geometry of, the, geometry of the circle says that x squared plus y squared equals r squared so we're going to use that fact now what we're going to do is show that sine squared sine squared theta so sine squared of theta is going to be this value to be squared so that's going to be y over r all squared and similarly we can show that cosine squared of theta is going to equal x over r to be squared and when we do that we get y squared over r squared and we get x squared over r squared now let's see what happens if we add the two um, trig functions so we're adding this one and this one here 
So, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is going to equal y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. And we can actually simplify that because they've got the same denominator. We get r squared on the bottom and on the top y squared plus x squared. And now what we're going to do is actually use a little bit of Pythagoras on this triangle here. And we can use Pythagoras to show that r squared must equal x squared plus y squared or y squared plus x squared. So I can go back to this and replace the y squared plus x squared with an r squared. And we get r squared over r squared, which must equal 1. And hence, we get the trig identity sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. And it's important that from this trig identity, we can rearrange and say, well, that means that the cosine squared of theta must equal 1 minus sine squared of theta. Or we can say that sine squared of theta must equal 1 minus cos squared of theta. And these are all uh, various versions of the same trig identity, but all equally useful. Now let's see how we might put one of these into practice. I'm going to prove that sine x plus cos x, all squared, is going to be identically equal to 1 plus 2 sine x cos x. Now when we're asked to do proofs like this, it usually helps to just take the left-hand side, or, or the right-hand side, depending on the question, and work towards uh, showing that it equals the other side. So I'm going to work on the left-hand side here. So what I can say is that sine x plus cos x all squared is going to be equal to sine x times sine x which is sine squared x sine x times cos x plus cos x times sine x so sine x cos x plus cos x sine x and then cos x times cos x cos squared x. Now you might notice that the, the two middle terms are exactly the same so we get sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x plus the cos squared x at the end and sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1 so we get 1 plus 2 sine x cos x which is exactly what we were trying to prove okay one more to do here so cos squared x over 1 minus sine x we're going to try and show that it equals 1 plus sine x well hopefully you remember earlier on I said cos squared x cos squared x using the second trig identity we proved is the same as 1 minus sine squared x so I can say 1 minus sine squared x all over 1 minus sine x that's the left hand side and now what we can do is we've got to realize that the top the numerator here is actually the difference of two squares so we can factorize this into 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. And that's all over 1 minus sine x. I'm going to put brackets around that. And then what we can do is we can divide top and bottom by 1 minus sine x. And we get simply left with 1 plus sine x x right that's it for this video hopefully you found it useful we'll be back again with another video soon all the best and good luck with revision